Um, hi, everyone. I'm Donnie Fong from the University of Washington. And uh, I'll be presenting our paper, Leveraging Dual Observable Input for Fine-Grained Thumb Interaction Using Forearm EMG. So electromyography, or EMG, is a technique for detecting the electrical activities that occurs in one's muscles when one moves or clenches them. Recently, there's been a lot of exciting work on using EMG to build wearable devices that can detect how one moves uh, their arms and hands, allowing one to use their motions to interact with their surrounding devices. One of the major advantages of such devices is that uh, because EMG sensors can detect how one moves their hands without being placed on the hands itself, uh, they can potentially enable users to control with other devices even while their hands are busy doing something else. And of course, uh, such EMG devices are potentially a convenient and cool way of interacting with everything ranging from your TV, <coughs> from your, uh, TV and PowerPoint presentation to uh, your smartphone or potentially any future wearable hand-mounted displays. Now, to classify thumb gestures, uh, these devices typically start by gathering lots of training data, which are previously recorded data samples of the users performing the various gestures. Then machine learning or some other statistical method is used to construct a model of the problem using the training data, which is then used to classify the EMG signals incoming to the EMG device into the corresponding gesture. Now, as many of you may know, uh, one of the keys towards such an approach of classifying gestures is the training data. And gathering training data can be a huge challenge for such devices. To get the best results, not only should the data be plentiful, as more data is crucial for adjusting against the negative impact of noise, but the data should also be person-specific, as different people can perform the same gestures in slightly different ways, uh, you know, at different speeds, different strengths, et cetera. Which means that if you use, data training, if you use training data gathered by someone else, or if you use a, a non-person-specific model, the accuracy will be lower. In addition, the training data should ideally cover a wide variety of circumstances, including arm position, body stance, how fatigued a person is, et cetera, as these could all affect how people perform their gestures. And so ideally, we need training data gathered across all these circumstances so that our classification algorithms will be robust against them. Gathering such training data can require a large amount of efforts, and requiring users to go through such effort before they can use an EMG device can be a large barrier to adoption. So we're introducing an innovative new approach for gathering training data that we're calling dual observable input. Dual observable input enables a large amount of person-specific training data to be gathered essentially for free. The key insight is that people are actually performing uh, gestures all the time uh, in their daily life, many of which are already being detected by existing devices, and many of which match the, the gestures that we're trying to recognize. Specifically, many of the hand and finger gestures that we're trying to recognize using EMG are already being performed and detected on a smartphone all the time. This means that if we wear an EMG device while we're using our smartphone, the smartphone can label the EMG signals incoming to the EMG device with the correct uh, gesture labels to, gather, to generate lots of training data. So essentially, uh, the dual observer input approach is about leveraging the people's natural interactions with the existing input devices around us. Because all these devices around us can already recognize what, what gestures we're performing, we can use a recognition of what we're doing to, in this case, train wearable input devices. To demonstrate the potential of dual observable input, we built the wearable device that we're calling Thumbs Up. Thumbs Up is a wearable EMG device uh, worn on the forearm that can detect and classify various thumb gestures. Specifically, it can detect and classify the gestures left and right swipe, tap, and long press, and other potentially more complex gestures. Uh, notice that left swipe, right swipe, tap, and long press are gestures that are performed very frequently on your smartphone. To detect the, to detect the thumb gestures, uh, Thumbs Up uses seven EMG input channels spread across the forearm, along with an accelerometer and gyroscope. Uh, it uses a custom EMG board and uses dry EMG electrodes to capture the EMG signals. It then uses Bluetooth to, communic to communicate with other devices. To classify the EMG input signals incoming to the device into the corresponding gestures, uh, thumbs up first filters and smooths the incoming signals. Then the, the filter signals are cross correlated against training data, which are previously recorded samples of the user performing left, right swipes, taps, etc. And as a quick note, uh, to cross-correlate two signals essentially measures the similarity between, between the two signals. And so by cross-correlating uh, the field signal against train data, we're essentially uh, comparing, we're essentially trying to figure out how, uh, how well the input signal matches against every single tra other train data point. Then we look at the, the five closest train data points, uh, five closest matches, and use our majority label as a classification of the input. So to train thumbs up, we use the dual observable input approach. Here's how it works. So first, we ask users to download a thumbs up app to their phone. 
the app will essentially uh, monitor the phone and communicate with the thumbs up device whenever a user interacts with the phone. Currently, the app detects any interactions a user has with the smartphone's lock screen or launcher, which is the main menu where users can select which app they want to open. Uh, it, won't currently, uh, it won't currently track all the interactions that a user has with, uh, within other apps, uh, but we found that the lock screen and launcher alone can already provide lots of interactions, and as a result, the app doesn't currently require root access to the user's phone. Uh, then we asked users to wear the thumbs up device throughout their daily life. During a user's daily life, uh, users will frequently interact with the smartphone. Whenever a user does so, the app will communicate with a thumbs up device, uh, allowing the device to capture what gesture the user is currently performing, along with the EMG signals currently incoming to the device that corresponds to that gesture to generate a training data point. Given enough time, enough training data can be gathered such that the device will be ready for use without the user ever having to explicitly train the device. So to evaluate thumbs up and its use of dual observable input, we uh, performed a small user study with seven participants. For each participant, our user study took place across three separate sessions. During each session, we asked users to wear the thumbs up device while going about their daily business, allowing us to gather uh, training data through the dual observable input approach. We gathered training data for the four gestures, left swipe, right swipe, tap, and long press. And in total, we gathered approximately 120 training data points for, uh, for each user, with approximately 10 of each uh, training data point, of tra 10 of each gesture gathered per session. Uh, during the session, we would also prompt the user, uh, we would also send messages to the user, user's phone to prompt them to interact with their phone more. Then to evaluate thumbs up, we would ask users to perform gestures in response to a prompt with a trained device. In total, we collected 60, data, 60 test data points with approximately five of each gesture gathered per session. And we focus, so we focus our analysis of results along four, main, along four major angles. So first, we measured how often users perform the gestures left, left swipe, right swipe, tap, and long press over the course of a day. Uh, as you can see, users, the participants performed over 100 gestures uh, on, their, on the lock screen and launcher alone over the course of a day, which is uh, in line with estimates from other similar studies. Notice that every time a user interacts with a phone, they may perform multiple gestures. Uh, these, results, these results suggest that there is potentially a lot of training data that can be gathered using the dual observable input approach. Next, we evaluate the accuracy uh, of thumbs up in using training data gathered using the dual observable input approach to classify thumb gestures. Overall, thumbs up had an accuracy of 82.9 in classifying thumb gestures. Now, this, this accuracy may not be as high as it ideally should be, and a lot of it reflects the difficulty in using EMG sensors placed on the forearm to classify thumb gestures, as not only are a lot of the muscles that control the thumb on the hand instead of on the forearm, but many of the signals that can be detected on the forearm can be somewhat noisy and difficult to detect. But to gain a deeper understanding into what is affecting the accuracy, we further analyze our data uh, along a few, in a few different ways. So this figure represents the graph shown on the previous page, which is obtained by using all of our participants' training data to classify all of our participants' test data. This figure represents what happens if we change the, if we reduce the amount of training data to a third. So as you can see, the, the accuracy does drop by a bit, but perhaps not by as much as one, was, one, one would expect which may reflect the relative simplicity of the thumb gestures we're trying to classify. But if we instead restrict the, the, the sessions from which the training data is coming from, we see that the accuracy will drop even further to 67.6%. Uh, this suggests that uh, the key to thumbs up's accuracy is, uh, so one of the keys to thumbs up, thumbs up so, <laughs> sorry. Uh, this suggests that one of the keys to thumbs up's accuracy is uh, the training data needs to be gathered across different sessions, and, uh, or in other words, different circumstances which highlights one of the potential benefits of the dual observable input approach, which is its ability to gather data across time and circumstances. Another thing we thought was important to examine was the difference between training data and testing data. So though this might not be the, uh, the case for uh, the dual observable input approach in general, for our thumbs up device in particular, the training data, which is gathered while users are using their, smart, are using their smartphone, may not exactly match the testing data, where users are just gesturing with their free hand. During our study, we gave users the time to first familiarize themselves with our train device before we performed our evaluations. But still, if we compare, if we compare the leave it out cross-validation accuracy uh, of, the, of, the of the training data against our evaluation accuracy, we can see that the cross-validation accuracy, which is 89.2%, is still a reasonable amount higher than our evaluation accuracy, which is 82.9%. Uh, this suggests that users did have some trouble adjusting to our thumbs-up device 
uh, compared to just using, compared to just swiping on the screen. And uh, this difference between the training data and testing data may be something to watch out for when using the dual observable input approach. Overall, though, we believe that thumbs up with its thumb-based input to potentially be a convenient and comfortable way, comfortable way of interacting with other devices, and that dual observable input to potentially be an excellent way of training such devices. In particular, we believe that the dual observable input to be useful beyond using training data gathered from the smartphone to classify left-right swipes, taps, and long press. For example, we did a small evaluation on using thumbs up to classify more complex user-defined gestures. Here are some of the gestures that users use to unlock their phone. We found that uh, thumbs up was frequently able to detect these gestures, especially if the gestures were perhaps more complex and more distinguishable. And of course, we think that thumbs up is useful for many other wearable devices, whether they're using sonometers, uh, magnet magnetic sensors, cameras, etc., and that the training data can come from many other sources besides a smartphone touchscreen, including computer keyboards, uh, video game controllers, Microsoft Connect, et cetera, to enable many types of wearable input devices. That's all I have. Thanks for listening. OK, uh, any questions? OK, I have one question. Uh, uh, is there an easy way to detect whether the user is using the same hand for performing the gesture as opposed to using the other hand. Uh, wait, I'm sorry, can you say that again? So it's now it's a way to detect. So in your experiment, you're detecting the users holding the phone, which was the sensor, and perform the gestures. Right. So it's now it's a way to detect the other situation where I'm using this hand. Oh. Uh, to perform the gesture, not the same sensor-wearing hand. Right, so uh, you would. Uh, Right now, we, we place, we have a, <coughs> for uh, our work, currently wearable device, all the sensors are placed on your right hand. Uh, to sense gestures that you perform with your other hand, you potentially need uh, sensors there as well. But uh, assuming that you have sensors placed on the other hand, um, and uh, assuming you, you have enough train data, you can potentially classify, like, you know, gestures with, uh, that you perform with your left hand on your smartphone as well. It's just that with our current setup, we only have sensors placed on, on one hand. Oh, would you also incorporate those gestures into your data set? Yeah, so basically every time you interact with the phone, um, the phone knows what gesture you're performing. And so uh, basically if you, I suppose if you perform like a, some sort of motion with your left hand on your right, uh, the phone will capture that you perform that gesture. And so uh, the next time if you try to, if you want to use the device without the smartphone by like swiping with your left hand on your open palm, for example, you could potentially use that training data for gathered using the observable input approach. So, uh, the, so our, current, our current device doesn't do that, but the approach itself may, may be able to generalize to be able to, to, you know, to support that behavior. Okay. Okay, that's great. I have another question, actually. <laughs> okay. So uh, can you actually extend this approach in a larger vocabulary of gestures, not just limited to so your gestures are basically based on how a user swipe their thumb while holding the phone. So can you use the similar approach to design a larger vocabulary of gestures, hand gestures? Yeah, potentially. I think uh, basically uh, I, I believe that uh, this approach can, can uh, capture like, yeah, basically any, uh, any existing interaction that can be detected already can be, you know, potentially used to generate gestures. And, uh, this is something that, uh, I also think that, like, potentially, um, yeah, it can also potentially detect, like, combinations of gestures, because, like, those are, you know, like, you might, you might uh, perform, like, a left swipe followed by a right swipe quickly on the phone, which might be something that, you know, can be captured uh, using this approach as well. It's really that uh, this approach can just hopefully, uh, potentially capture, like, any type of interaction, as long as it can be detected by your existing input device. Um, it can, all that can potentially be used as trained data. <laughs> 